was born in Pennsylvania in 1928. He was the youngest of three boys, and his parents were Slovakian immigrants. As a child, Andy was good at art and even participated in an art program for gifted children. After graduating from college, he moved to New York and visited Glamour magazine on his second day there. They liked his work, and his first shoe illustration was published in 1949. Andy made a great deal of money as a commercial illustrator, but by 1960, he had decided that he wanted to become a painter and to be recognized as a serious artist. Warhol's soup can paintings stirred up a lot of excitement. The artist said about his work, I just paint things that I always thought were beautiful, things that you use every day and never think about. Andy developed his iconic technique using silkscreen. He placed a large canvas on the floor and stretched the silkscreen over it. He poured the paint into a corner and then used a squeegee to push the paint across the surface. Andy's love for movies greatly influenced the next phase of his painting. It all began with Marilyn Monroe. The movie star died when she was only 36 years old. Andy, a lifelong fan, had adored Marilyn and had even met her in person. She fascinated me, as she did with the rest of America, he said. Jean-Michel Basquiat was born in Brooklyn in 1960 to a Puerto Rican mother and a Haitian father. His parents' background of French, Spanish, and English were major influences of his art. Another influence actually developed from being hit by a car as a child. Basquiat had to have his spleen removed, causing him to gain interest in reading Gray's Anatomy. The textbook resulted in the biomechanical nature of his images and the graffiti inscribed on his canvases. Basquiat was a high school dropout. His claim to fame began when he attracted attention in New York City as the graffiti artist Samo. He was considered to be a neo-expressionist painter whose artwork often depicted a contrast between things like wealth and poverty, integration and segregation, and inner and outer experiences. His artwork took influences from poetry, drawings, and figuration. Basquiat was quoted as saying, believe it or not, I can actually draw. These words were vital to his career, because to the untrained eye, one might think that Basquiat's artistic abilities were limited, when in fact he was a genius for his time, often having offers for as much as $50,000 for his paintings. For a long time, Jean-Michel Basquiat lived with a photo of Andy Warhol on the wall above his bed. Basquiat idolized the art world legend, and in 1980, he plucked up enough courage to approach Warhol at a restaurant in Soho, and he offered the pop artist one of his Xeroxed photo collages. In 1982, the pair met formally when their Zurich dealer, Bruno Bischofberger, brought Basquiat to the factory where Warhol took a Polaroid of him. Soon at the suggestion of Bruno, the two began working collaboratively and developed a strong friendship. Basquiat, overwhelmed by his own celebrity, saw Warhol as a protective alter ego, with the older artist captivated by his protege's creative energy. The complex dynamics and the juxtaposition of their signature assertive styles energized the paintings they made together between 1983 and 1985. In 1987, Warhol's life was tragically cut short. While recovering from a gallbladder surgery, Warhol died in his sleep of a post-operative cardiac arrhythmia. After Andy's death, Basquiat became increasingly isolated, and his heroin addiction and depression grew even more severe. Despite an attempt at sobriety during a trip to Maui, Hawaii, he died on August 12, 1988 of a heroin overdose at his art studio.